Hello, good afternoon. I'm going to present Daniel from Buenos Aires. He's going to talk about how they're using Drupal in Argentina. Argentina. And it's related to Dries keynote that talks about how to use Drupal in the government. So I really look forward to seeing this use case from Latin America. Thanks, Daniel. Woo! Okay, uh, hi all, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm really happy being here. I'm Daniel Abadi. I'm Buenos Aires City Electronic Government Director. Um, first of all, today, tonight, this is, I love to say this, this is a special message from the White House. The uh, White, White House here is organizing a hackathon to try to help in Oklahoma. So all coders available should go to the code and launch at Double Tree today, 7.30 p.m., and try to help and see what's coming up there. There's also a website called, it's bit.ly dash Drupal for OK, so you can see all the program there. So I hope you see you all tonight there. Yes, everyone's coming? Okay. So, Buenos Aires. We started this journey about two years ago when we took off the office of electronic government trying to, to change Buenos Aires city websites. It was really hard. We, you know, we were thinking how to try to get the, the administration really smart and stop talking about, you know, smart cities. Cities, it's not about buildings, it's about people. So you need to try to focus on the citizen and try to abandon, you know, all government structures. Right now, what I want to talk with you guys is trying to think about why all government websites are dead, why you need to start thinking about that user driving experience, why you need to have architecture models in Drupal, which was our solution for that case, and talk to you about our migration experience in government and how our digital platform is set for the city. But first of all, you know, I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. We are really a faraway country. We are right, right there, down there. <laughs> okay, yes, you can laugh. Anyway, so for the people that know, Buenos Aires City is the capital of Argentina. We got about three million people living in our city, and every day they commute about four million people. That's a lot of people. So what we are giving services, if you think about it, it's to eight million people that use us for our schools, use our hospitals, and all our infrastructure. So that's mainly our information. When you see about our government, three years ago, our mayor took the decision to set up free offices. Mm -hmm. New Media Office, which is in charge of citizen engagement and community engagement inside government, trying to get you know community managers, tutorials and reunions and trying to standardize processes. Our open government office was in charge of collecting the data, setting standards for releasing that data and the relationship with NGOs and other development communities. And our electronic government office, we're in charge of websites, mobile apps, maps, and digital strategy for the city. So, we end up, you know, looking for our first website. We was this. This is Buenos Aires City first website, 1997. <laughs> yeah, way back machine. So, you know, at that time, this this website wasn't so wrong. You know, it was extremely focused on the city, and it was a 97 page. So, you know, we got famous people in our website that used to live in the city and some services. Um, somehow. In 2004, we changed to this, which, you know, the thing is, for 2004, it was really good. It was developed inside government, but it was still 2002. And when we took the office in 2011, we found this website. Not only we found this website, but we found 400 websites, all, all focused on government structures and politician egos. Which is really a problem, you know, because when you think your websites 
thinking about your government, government structure, you, you are missing about people, you know? You are losing that great thing, you know, users need, that is, for example, just in school for your kids, getting married, you know, getting an appointment for our office. And, you know, that's, that's internet right now. That's where government should go, but government should, you know, people doesn't care who gave them the service inside government. They know, it for, in our case, they know the service came from Buenos Aires city governments. They don't know, they don't need to know which area of the government do it. You know, it's really user-driven work experience. You know, that's, that's what we were trying to change three years ago. And the mayor get it. And we, we, we proposed the mayor, you know, trying to focus on the citizen. And then we get in another talks, you know, because this is government that you need to talk with a lot of people to make things done. So we talk with the secretary of media, the general secretary, the modernization minister. And after many, many, many talks, we, we show them we really need to go to a user driven experience where we can solve all these problems. So we were having 400 websites. Why? Why we were sending all that dispersed traffic and attention of the people, making them confused? It's really hard to admin the content of 400 websites. Yes? How do we you know, manage about 70 web teams inside the organization? Most of you, I don't know if you're part of government, but if you see an organization so complex like a government, you'll find you've got more than one development team inside the organization, and they are having different strategies. So it's really hard to, to get them pulled together to the same place. And then, of course, we want you to maintain our levels of services. Buenos Aires City main website has about 23 million visits a year, which represents almost 190 million page views which is really a lot. So two years ago, we went to Drupal Con Chicago trying to find an answer for that. We got a lot, lot of questions. We were, you know, terrified. Like, you know, we were changing our websites and we haven't got a solution. We choose, you know, Joomla, WordPress. Even we thought about making ourselves a new framework, which was really dumb at that time. So we went to Chicago and we found a great government community that, you know, it covered the thing that it helped us not to feel so alone, you know. I met Kristen over there, that I'm seeing her, you know, with Drupal for Gov and all that government therapy sessions about, you know, that we are not alone and we are having the same problems. It doesn't care, it doesn't matter if you are Buenos Aires, if you're Sao Paulo, New York, Chicago, or, or San Francisco, it's government, and sometimes, you know, it's bureaucracy is the same in, in many countries. So we came back from Chicago having some things resolved and trying to set up a strategy of, or, of what we should do for Buenos Aires City. So first of all, we, we set up some needs we need to cover and see if Drupal could match what, what we need. For example, we wanted a free click browsing in our websites. So that's why we are trying to force our administration to create content, just focus on the citizen. We wanted to get all the organization inside one installation. That's why we choose organic groups using you know, fields and core role management. Our 70 development teams, we integrated in a centralized Git inside our IT agency. We got our own modules, and mainly we, we set up uh, an architecture that let us work. Uh, don't get me wrong, we tested all distributions being around. We tested open public, we downloaded everything. At the end, we decided that we should do it from scratch, you know. That, that's what's the, the main key at our solution. So we came up with this. You know, this is the core for Buenos Aires City. We are using Varnish, 
Drupal 7 for our Buenos Aires City main website, which is buenosairescity.gov.ar. Our new tourism website, which is running in the same single installation, but has a different type of orientation. It's built in multi-languages. It's been responsive. We are also using some add-ons like our own solar lucene system, which runs separately. We manage, you know, we're using Memcache and MySQL. We are building our own API, our own login for the citizen. Our GIS unit, it's, we're creating our own maps, and we are using OpenX to administrate all the banners inside the city, that, and inside the website, that allow us to have a better perform and also track how those banners perform, because something you're gonna learn in government that everyone wants to be in the website. And not everyone gets clicks. It's simple math. So the way to show people if your campaign for say it some way performs is to have information, to have data. So that's why we're setting OpenX, which is a module for Drupal. So then we find we found our architecture should, you know, support things like this. This is a visualization about our varnish log where you can see users hitting our website during two minutes. It's about 9,000 requests per second. And what you see is varnish moving, that, that pong is varnish moving, trying to, you know, give back the information that your, your user requests. This is happening right now in our website and many of your installations. Sometimes, you know, we doesn't care or we don't take much of a, prof of a deeper view on, on what is happening in our system. You know, Drupal, as you know, requests a lot and demands a lot of services. Yes? Here you see, I don't know, Drupal, our solar system, our legacy website that we are still running, some applications, then you got some tries of hacking or attacks in some places. It's really, it's really nice to see it. We can pull up. So, trying to get that work, we set up a core strategy for modules. We try to get, you know, about the 80% of the cases trying to be solved with these modules. You know, panels, views. We got our form, our own form module, where we're not, you know, saving the, the forms information inside Drupal database. We're sending it to Mongo database, which is easier and performs better. We got organic groups, social block, uh, workflow, which is really great. You know, and that's why, you know, most we love panels of views are helping us to print and screen information really quick and in a better way. And mostly workflow and organic groups has been the solution to integrate different areas of the government with roles and publishing rights, you know, inside the content. Right now the issue is not how your website performs or no or how your work, website looks. It's about how you, internal users adopt this system and they keep it, you know. That's why we set up workflow and organic groups, you know. Basically, that idea of organic group, we took it watching Open Atrium that use organic groups for many of their content. And we tried to analyze how if we, took, if we took it out from Open Atrium and set it up in our website, how you can manage different groups of government and different types of content. For example, a uh, necessary thing in same government is that if you get an, two different agencies running the same program, you don't need to have two different contents. That's why we use, you know, organic groups. So, until now, this was, I say, the easy part. Because, you know, it was all technical, we were close, all in our office, trying to think how, how a website should run in Buenos Aires City after, you know, 10 years, they never change it. And we step on this. Basically, we found that our legacy system was at 75,000 files hardcoded in HTML and no database. We used to have no content manager. And that's, this was our main website. 
Then we have about 399 other sites that were in the same situation. <laughs> so finally, we tried to take migration and it was like getting a cat in a box. So we screwed up, we failed, and we failed big. So we took a decision, you know, to rewrite it all. So to rewrite all, you need to get to the administration and tell them you're not gonna do a soft migration, taking a database and just publishing everything as it was, so that we're gonna now take a new strategy, we're gonna rewrite all the content, focus on the citizen, so if your content doesn't include the citizen inside your words, you're not part of our site. So if you can imagine, as you can imagine, we had a lot of complaints about that the first time. <laughs> Uh, thankfully, the mayor was on our side. So we need to, for that time, we took something for granted. You know, in immigration, you're gonna lose links, you're gonna lose traffic. The things that you deploy won't be there. Don't know why, but they won't be there. <laughs> and you have to learn to live with that things. Because if you don't learn to, to live with those things, your site will never be online. It's, that, that's the truth. It's really hard to set up a migration, trying to move it just, you know, from one day to the other, say, okay, we are gonna be online in two weeks, everything will be migrated. You can't, you're not gonna to lose data. You're losing data, you're losing links, you're losing Google position. That's how it works, and it's good that it's working that way, because it's natural. You, you force the administration to change content every time. Because, you know, all content doesn't help. It confuses the citizens. So trying to get more friends in the administration than enemies, we set up a website, extremely flexible. This is one sorry, city homepage right now. Uh, we set up a modular website with a great, great simplicity of, you know, a news, news slider, some shortcuts, and free positions down there that allow us to deploy widgets being banners, agenda, request of services, and we, when we try to standardize that. So if you go to an agency, the agency has the same features and we try, we try to reuse the code we developed. And we try to force our administration to get inside these modules, trying to learn how to get the content inside here, you know, because our main goal was not to migrate the website, was to decentralize the content management, that's the key. Before that, we were centralizing the content manager. So once we get the areas, you know, get their content inside and try to manage their information, for us, for us it was much more easier to release, you know, different areas. You know, you get some power. Once you get some users, it's really hard to stop this. And right now we are, having a Drupal website and our legacy website is still online, is still online and we're still migrating that information. So then what we made was create a how-to guide. This is a guide that explains every procedure in the city in a really, really, really simple way that is inside this Drupal and, and allow us to integrate it with our news, with our different content of the areas and mainly we force the administration to set up one, two, three, four steps. So you need to explain a government procedures at least in four steps. It's, it's really complicated for people, it's not. So trying to get people more simpler processes and content, it's, it's, trying, it's the weapon we choose for our website. We were looking to simplify our content, you know, trying to get that, government bureaucracy in, in text that is really hard for the users. I don't know you guys, but I'm really frustrated when I do not understand a government procedure. It's, it's a really horrible user experience. And that's what's about internet right now. You need to give people a great user experience because you are the government and you can make his life better for five seconds in a website or, can, or you can do it a hell for them in five seconds. So we standardized our process and our type of content, releasing procedures, 
uh, news and different type of contents aligned to the city, right, needs. For that also, we adapt, adapt our Twitter bootstrap and create our own distribution trying to set this front end develop gui development guide to the administration, trying to give it to different areas for the legacy system, for the new system, for the new websites, trying to get them inside our um, ten, our ten, I'll say it, our point of view, so we can set a standard inside our, you know, so using Twitter Bootstrap, you, you find everything is responsive and everything is in the same styles we like and we are not doing horrible websites as we should. So using Twitter Bootstrap, this is our tourism site which is built into Twitter Bootstrap, which is already responsive. It's, been in, it's built in a distribution with almost five languages and Right now here, it's also focused on the citizen. We tried to, took, to take our old tourism site and translate it to Drupal in the same installation we have our main website. We're also working on a posting site, which is built in Drupal. This basically is our economic development agency that's trying to get an, a posting site online. So we took Drupal plus some modules we were using in with our 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 sites and we deploy it here. But you know, all this was you know putting a team together. So right now this is this is how our team works in Buenos Aires office. We are about 40 people. Uh, we started being four. Uh, it was a great, great ride and a difficult one because, you know, when we are four people trying to maintain a website huge as Buenos Aires, it's really hard. And when you try to convince the organization that you need to get a UX device designer, when you need to get a mobile designer or PHP or Python, it's, and it's cheaper than spending $15 million on a website, people sometimes doesn't get it. But thankfully, you know, the city get it. So right now we are trying to get talented people for our teams to give back to the community and to integrate inside our organization. Those, that team, it looks like this. This is another visualization of, this is our Git repository. So this is about two years of work. So everyone using Drupal and Git, every time they commit or they pull or they share some code, those makes those explosions. So that's about, you know, September 2011, and you'll see it going till, March, till May of this year. And what you see is how talented people inside the administration can deliver, deliver great programs, great, great sites, and great products, and not always, you know, being outsourcing things. We have about city budget, two thirds of the budget, it goes to education, health, and social aid. So we need to do it in-house. There's no way we're gonna spend a ton of money because you know, Latin America needs, has different needs at the states. So that's how our team works in using Git and, and Drupal. But you know, when you think about this, you know, you know that, I'm changing it, uh, sorry, but. You know, it's not about the apps. I know I'm going fast, but uh, it's not about the apps. It's never about the apps in government. Uh, may maybe you guys have faced it. It's, it's about changing, uh, changing the culture. Governments have thought the same way for the last 70 years. And their employees have done the same things. I'm a, I know, I'm a government employee. I know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> we tried to bring young and talented people to bring new air to, new air to the administration, you know, trying to break those rules and trying to help people inside government to capacitate, you know, get capacitation, get education about coding. That's why last year we started, you know, a developing module for, for Drupal, trying to get government employees to learn how to develop a module inside our websites, which is really, really simple. And of course, 
our contractors. Sometimes, you know, a, a government area, an agency, they, you know, they call me, okay, now we get a contractor, we already bought a website, we're trying not to buy websites. We're trying to work with contractors and ask them modules, ask them to contribute to our distro and not to buy a new entire website with, in the end, when you think it, you need to, you need to maintain the, those websites and sometimes, you know, contractors are not forever. So what we tried to do in our organization was setting up a GovCam, trying to integrate government employees, which, you know, is a resume of our GovCam. So what you can see here is, you know, this is one day, 500 employees talking about anything they do in government related with technology, maps, urban development, uh, whatever you want, trying to see, you know, engage. It's really necessary for governments to engage between their employees and between their citizens. It's really hard to have websites that never, never change the content. Why? Why, why we are working with websites that you cannot change content every day? We should be, you know, thinking this and getting approach to the citizen with new tools, Drupal gave us that opportunity to set a bar inside government strategy for websites. And right now, you know, setting a GovCam makes us possible to explain what, what we are doing in government. So, as I said before, it's not about the apps, it's about, you know, getting people engaged, getting a change of culture inside government, you know, getting closer to people. Uh, Government officials should be closer to people somehow. During my role, it's been using in the internet to be closer to people. And that's, that's what it's all about. It's not about, and you know, it's not about Drupal or setting up a huge, a huge infrastructure in technology. It's not about internet gurus. It's just, you know, people. So, thank you. Hi, Daniel. That was a very good presentation. I'm from Brazil. I was not aware of uh, Golf Camp. Really liked it. And now we're opening for questions. So whoever wants to ask a question, please come to the microphone. Hello, I'm from Mexico. I just want to ask, why do you use Open Public, the IKEA distribution, as a, for the front office? And what are you using if you are using something for the back office? Uh, I mean, is, uh, which are your plans to implement uh, digital government using Alfresco, Solar, or what are mm. your future plans for these well, sites? Okay, thank you. Uh, we test open public and we, we discover the, the performance of the application wasn't just fine for us. It consumes a lot of resources, so we decide to go for we, on our own Drupal installation and try to use core modules and things that were standard in the industry. On the second question, we are using Solar Plus Lucene for, for our search, try to index PDFs and every database we have. And the content manager is done with Drupal. We are not using autonomy or any other open source solutions. Hi, I'm from Philadelphia. Uh, I was just wondering what sort of testing tools you guys used for your site. Um, I assume that you'd have some sort of automated testing for uh, making sure that everything's up and running, so. Yeah, well, we got several processes inside our government. We need, we have a dev, in, well, our setup is, you know, development, uh, testing, and releasing to production, production plus, you know, information security tests. Uh, right now we are running, you know, JMeter test it plus, uh, uh, that's the automation one, where, where we try to scale, and then we do some focus groups. Okay trying to set up, plus a lot of analytics and metrics. Hi, my, my name is John. Hey, John. I'm from Nigeria. Um, thanks. We 
experienced the same problem that, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, that you just showed us. I'm actually dreaming of the day that we'll get to where you are. We have lots of scattered websites all around, just exactly the same problem. So I'm thinking, is there a way you can put a little documentation you know, for uh, people in the .gov group? At least we can download that and read through, and then you can help us with our implementation. Sure. Well, right now, we, we have a GitHub account, which is github.com dash GCBA, which is, means in Spanish government of the city of Buenos Aires. So we are trying to release all the code we are doing at our GitHub. Right now we are working, we should polish our Drupal installation so you can deploy it. We're trying to think it extremely open and focus on local governments, but yes, we are willing to hop in anything we can. Anyone else? Any more questions? Well, perhaps I'll make one question okay. about the golf camp. Uh, did only uh, people from Buenos Aires attend this, or did you have participation from other countries? For oh, example, it was Brazil an, an internal event. An internal, we tried okay. to get people involved, and it's, we were okay. thinking about, about almost 100 people, and they come about 500, which was yeah. really huge. and is scary. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we are we are not thinking of organizing a, a, a golf camp for for outside of our organization, mm -hmm. but it can always can be a possibility. Yeah, it's a it's a good idea, I think. <laughs> Thanks. Great job, Daniel. Thank you. Um, I love to see the Argentinian government people smiling. You know, that means you did a really good job. Um, quick question on the technical architecture: What role did Python play? Uh, in that? We use Python for every services and external module we can use. Python and Django, it performs extremely great, great, you know. All our APIs is built on Python and okay. Django. So you built the APIs in Python? Because, yeah. I mean, I don't understand how Python plays with, with Drupal. Uh, you can, when you build a module, you get the front end. Well, Mariano is our lead developer. He can explain it better. But when you <laughs> when you build our model, for example, forms, you 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 get your part in PHP inside Drupal, and all the back end it called it runs in Python. All the back end runs yeah. in Python. Okay. For some modules. Okay, I'll chat with him a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Um, I got kind of two questions. First, I'm curious. What drove the decision to kind of change the way you address the people? Was it, the, was it you responding to what the people were saying they wanted, or was it a forward-looking government saying this is what the future needs to be? And then the second part of the question, a little bit different. Um, as far as when you were planning out the project and trying to scope out you know, the, the size of it and the timeline, how well were you, did you do at, at staying within those boundaries? Okay, the first question will be, uh, it's a mix of, you know, Latin American countries, I don't know how much you know about history, but people for many years, they were kind of apart from governments. Uh, when we draw our communication strategy for the mayor for the second term, which it started in 2011, we, we knew it was key for us to get closer to the people, so mainly, not also our online communication is focused in the citizen, also our online and traditional communication is focused on the citizen. So it's you know a combination of, although people is not requesting it, you need to be near people. And the other part, uh, we try to maintain inside our schedule using a concept which is called Lean Startup, you know, the minimal valuable product you can release so you can move forward because what used to happen were for Buenos Aires City websites has had two previous failures launching. They tried to do it all in one piece. It was really hard. So we took minimum viable product and tried to release things quick, trying to get smarter. 
Okay. Thanks, Daniel. And if somebody wants to vote on this session, you can do this on the DrupalCon website. You can find the session and, and give a feed, feedback for us. Thank you. Thank you all.